Hello. Monday now, 25th of March. Quarter to 10. That's sleeping in for me. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I hope I don't get the flu or anything. I've been out and about a little bit around people. I had the sniffles when I came home, so hope that's all it is, is the sniffles. Hey, folks, hope you're doing all right. Bill, thanks for the offer to talk to Mark Johnson. Um, I'm going to pass on that right now. Um, the idea doesn't excite me. I appreciate the offer. I'd like to be excited by the idea of the next person I speak to. How's that? That's really the essence of, of how I operate is, and I think that's really the essence of how most people operate is that when we're uh, working from a seat of true in, in interest, inspiration, whatever you call it, that's when things are, are good or more interesting, I should say, at the very least. So to take a quick look at the, uh, the comments, which um, I'm not going to standardize it, but it is kind of something that I, it makes sense to kind of do. I got a, a, a message from my great nephew, Gabriel, on my last video, if you didn't see it. Gabriel is my great nephew. He's the one who's painting, excuse me, illustrates this release from last week, last year on Public Eyesore. You ought to get, you ought to get this. But Gabrielle said, um, that's interesting you say that about being spacey, Unc, and family talking to you as if you're dumb. I get the same treatment and feel, felt angered a lot. Um, Always oh, going to go see Slow Dive in Pomona. Oh, see, that's my peeps. That's my, that's my Gabrielle. Gabrielle, don't let them, let them, I would say the words in, in person you know, friendly, but direct. Don't let them MFs um, talk to you like that. You know, when I, when I came, when I figured it out, I was angry, but I let it be known. I said, you people back the fuck up. You don't, I was, I didn't say that as a kid, but that's the essence of my, my message and my behavior is that you all don't know what's going on with me. And I don't like you trying to paint a picture of me that I, that is not true. Just because I'm not acting like y'all don't mean shit. Fuck off. That's 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 the message to people who mess with you. That's really the message that I have for people who, when I talk about, when I encourage people who feel victimized or feel less than others. Sometimes you just need to tell the rest of the world to just fuck off. Y'all don't know what the hell's going on. I'm perfectly who I am, and that is just fine. And I'm working on accepting myself, and y'all can join in when you feel like it. And that's my motto. I'm not leaving it up to the rest of the world for me to, for me to feel good about myself. Because when I was doing that, I was coming up short, real short. Okay. So is there music to be sp spoken of? Well, sure there is. Always, you know, always. Yeah. So I played a CD yesterday. Not too many records yesterday. I, I'll get back to my music. Someone made a comment, but I don't want to riff on it, but a CD that I've had for a long time, probably since it came out in 1999. Homage to Polnareff, Michel Polnareff, the uh, pop star. Um, um, is he Belgian or French? Anyway, the guy that had <clears throat> wore the white sunglasses. Um, I must be honest, I've had this for 20 years and never listened to the whole damn thing until yesterday. This is true for all of us, isn't it? Well, not all of us, but big collectors. 
I'm sure there's other collectors besides me who have records that they have not actually heard all the way through. This was a revelation. Um, I watched a French um, language documentary about Paul Narep yesterday to understand what, the, what it was about him. And most I gather is that he was classically trained as a kid, a uh, bit of a prodigy, started making music and then made the headlines when he did a photo shoot where he's wearing a dress and showed his butt. So typical of us, you know, so typical. He's making great music, but we don't hear nothing about him until he shows his ass. When I was young, I was tempted to do that, and I have mooned the audience a few times in my younger days. But I'm so glad that I, you know, did not have the opportunity to live out some of my adolescent fantasies about being a rock, a rock and roller, because they would be embarrassing memories. Anyway, this is amazing, now, and it's interesting. The breadth of artists on here is, is stunning. It starts with Pulp, then we get to St. Etienne, Blaine Reininger of T Tuxedo Moon, and then Louis Philippe. Some of you maybe have heard of him, you should have. Then we get into Nick Cave of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. And this is what's interesting now. I respect Nick T Cave, but his entry on here is one of the weaker ones. Now, he's gotten better since these days. You know, he started out in punk. But I noticed that it's like, oh, shit, Nick Cave can't keep up at this time. That's just my opinion. Yes, I am. Richard, if you see this, I saw your um, repost of, um, because of the, Jay, the, the Third Out Foundation. I am opinionated, and that's okay, isn't it? Even if it isn't, I am opinionated, and it is okay. But shit, right after Nick Cave on here is The Residence. Then Peter Hamill of Vandergraaf Generator. Uh, this is really good. Um, some of the other standout names for you are Mark Allman of Soft Cell, Pascal Camelade, and Pizzicato 5. That was my home discovery of the day yesterday. I rather enjoyed actually pulling the CDs. Um, as I said, I tend to resist requests. I may pull some more today, but I want to talk... There's another, there was another comment. Let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, I heard the new Jesus and Mary chain. I'm not going to buy it. It's just, it's no big deal. Um, what did he say? Someone said that they thought it was interesting that, yes, here it is. It is rare to find a musician who spends more time talking about other artists' work than their own work. Cheers. And then I responded, well, yeah, I'm a huge music fan. Then another person, Croiners, I guess is how you say it, says, most musicians are huge fans of their own music. Well, I am a huge fan of my own music. And it's developed over time because one of my Achilles heel or one of the things that I always battle against um, in growing into making music from being just a, a fan into making music is that, is it good enough? Is it good enough? Is the quality high enough? And that's been an internal battle. Um, one of the most satisfying things about making music anymore is when I'll be listening to music and maybe there's a playlist on my iTunes and it'll be a mix and it'll be me listening to some other artist, And then in the next on the playlist, ne next will be something by me, and there won't be a shift in quality. There won't be a dip in quality. And the other thing I have to say is, you know, I can't get on here and just talk about myself. What? What? I don't watch people who just talk about themselves. But I listen to my music, and it touches me deeply. Someone shared with me that green light. I played this stuff, but the again the the fidelity of the the way this thing attenuated it it it, it takes off the clarity. But interlude has some very 
personal pieces of music on here. Green Life. Someone mentioned how Green Life chokes them up. It has that effect on me too. When it, when the music, when these pieces come to me, a lot of it actually happens right here in this room. But what's going on is what's happening in here as opposed to what's happening outside of the, the, the window. And it's using this music to create an atmosphere that makes everything around me much more palatable. A, a track that I'd like to point out on here is the track Cho. It's number seven. It's number seven on purpose because I'm a seven. I might not really be a seven, but I consider myself a seven. My birthday is July 7th, 7, 7, 55. Cho is just a working title. I never come up with a real title, but that is the piece of music that I wrote when my brother died. <clears throat> and for a while, after getting it to the point where it was what I wanted it to be, I couldn't listen to it without crying. <clears throat> That's not the only one. This music is very emotional. Um, reflection is one. I've released it before. It's very simple and repetitive, but it just carries me away. Like I wish more music did. My music has a very strong effect on me. And so, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak more on it, shed some light, more of you are to own this. Buy a copy. More of you are to own this. Buy a copy. You all should own this. All these. The Muse. Buy a copy. Please. Okay. Okay. All right. So, no, that's... It was all right. Let me keep going here. Yeah. Okay. So, see, I get these promotional uh, updates as a result of being on the mailing list from doing some. I'm on some mailing lists as a result of doing <clears throat> the interviews I've done. For a minute, I was going to um, unsubscribe, but I said, "No, let me stay on these um, mailing lists. Who knows? Some other opportunity to talk to someone." Or something else may arise that might be worth it. Bill, thanks again for offering M Mark Johnson. So I want to talk about this for a second. Because this new Julia Holter is really good. Something in the room she moves. Don't get what she's singing about. I, I And I listened. I listened to this all the way through last night again. This is musically wonderful. It's interesting. She does things um, harmonically that are weird. It's like, so when you, I don't know music, har, theory, but I, I think I inherently understand it. And she does things here where it feels like it's moving this way, it's moving this way, and all of a sudden it goes that way. Or then it stops. And it's like, that's kind of weird. So I had to listen to a couple things again to make, to make sure I wasn't, you know, just imagining this. It's like, this is different. I don't, still don't quite catch what she's singing about. As I've said, quite honestly, for the most part, I really don't really care. And just for this, she's not new to me. I like Julia Holter. I also have Ecstasis. I thought I would show this. And I also have this, which is really good. And they're all, they don't sound the same. Tragedy. That's why I decided to, to get the new album without hearing it. I said, well, she's been interesting so far. She's been interesting, and she is. So I'm going to grab um, from... An, the same top row of CDs. Okay, I'm getting a stack here, okay? 
I don't know how many of these. I don't know how many of these I'm going to get through, but I got. I, I grabbed the stack, okay. And um, just like the polar rep yesterday was a rebel a revelation. Let's see. Okay, so there's the Jostaberry. I showed that yesterday. Oh, I showed the other one. I have this on vinyl as well. I I bought this. I said, yeah, this is real good, Jostaberry. Next, Joyce from Brazil. Man, I love Brazilian music. I don't know much about Joyce. I understand, I do believe I get it right that she is quite popular in Brazil. She's fantastic. Haven't played this in a long time. I can't think of um, any Brazilian music I've ever heard that I don't like. Okay. Joy Division, closer. So we're in the J's. J's moving into the K's. My dad committed suicide when this came out. And so it was. it's a tough listen. I can hardly listen to this, okay? It's an amazing piece of work. But at the same time, when it came out, when it came out, it was really obvious to me that uh, this is, this. Uh, he's telling you, I'm going to kill myself. It's all over the album, R right? Can you discern that? It's obvious. Joy Division, still. Here's a 4AD. Four, four um, okay, 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 okay. All right, all right, I'll do this. I have a stack here. I'm going to try to go through all these if it doesn't go too long. On 4AD, this is Joyride. Is this an imaginary soundtrack? Music from the motion picture Joyride. So uh, I don't know what the movie is, never actually seen it or really know much about it, but it's got all these 4AD artists on it. Lush, Spiria X, Tarnation, you know, pretty cool. This Mortal Coil, Michael Brook, Colorbox. It's, it's basically a 4AD compilation. That's why I have this here. Oh, man. Good morning, Raymond. Good morning, Gary. How you doing? Well, I'm good. I'm in the middle of making a video right now. Oh. Did you need something? No, I just wanted to ask you. I want to cut alongside that fence, but I have to come over on your side yeah. and get some. Yeah, come on over. Yeah, that's fine. That's I'm fine. Just coming through the fence over here. Yeah, that's fine, Ray. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd let you know. Thanks a lot, brother. So I can ask you. Okay, thank you, Derek. Take care. Bye, bye. That's my that's my cousin. I was almost gonna stop, but it's like, well, this is real life. What's going down? He's the one that um, I've taken to the emergency room several times, and you know he's doing better now. Where are we at? J V K M. Teledisc Disco One. It's on Darla. This is something electronic, I think. I don't remember. I'll have to look it up. I'll have to play it. Like I said, I got a bunch of shit. Here's an obscure progressive rock record I've never seen on vinyl. Kane. Resica Gem. And I've looked this up several times. It's been a while since I've looked it up, but I can never find anything out about this. It's pretty good. It's not great. But this is the sort of thing. Like, for instance, someone keeps suggesting shoegaze. It's not the genre that speaks to me. It's the music. You know, there's some really good music and good in shoegaze. But it's not because it's shoegaze that I'm interested. Okay, just thought I'd clarify that. Let's keep going. Here we have Henry Kaiser, David Lindley. In Madagascar, a world out of time. Two great guitarists. I don't remember what this sounds like. So, 
again, in some ways, by asking and me responding to this, you know, it um, it's a revelation. You know, I really... People with collections like this, like me, don't need to buy any more records. It's just something we like to do. Here's another Henry Kaiser with Alan Licht. Skip to the solo. And this is on Public Eyesore. The same label as I'm on. Public Eyesore. Same label. Public Eyesore. Okay. Get this. You need this in your collection. This is kind of abstract. What's next? Cactus. Here's something that was sent to me. I forget who. Cackle font. It's got... Oh, yes, it's fourth dimension. Okay, so, Richard, if you see this, you get another, another shout-out. This is another good one on your label. This is um, those... It sounds like that color. Those colors. This is good. I can't describe it any further than that. Fourth dimension. Some of you folks probably need to put get some fourth dimension in your collections. What's next? The mighty bass player Mick Karn, unfortunately passed away not much too young. Dreams of reason produce monsters. Is he Serbian? He's you know he's. His ethnicity is not Anglo-Saxon, and that figures into the way he played the bass. Very snake-like, um, fretless, in a league with, um, in many ways, some folks might dispute this, but this is my opinion. In many ways, he was in league with Jaco Pastorius regarding his skills on the um, fretless. I don't want to go a whole half hour here. I'm going to just show a few more here. Mick Karn, The Tooth Mother. This is some unusual stuff. Really good. Mick Karn, Be Bestial, Bestial Cluster. He was a character. And he was also one of the, um, when the band Japan was going, of course, David Sylvian being the lead man and being so pretty was the primary focus, but Mick Karn was too. And I think many fans will, will say that, yes, there was a, it was a double, well, the whole band was beautiful, but Mick Karn was, was captivating. Here is the first time I heard the band Catatonia. Um, Sounds of Decay. And this is back when they were um, a little more black metal-y, and they, they became more prog. This is, this is heavy. I think that's a still from the film Beloved. You ever heard of that film? It's a trip. I don't know what it's about, but it's it's a trip. So when we keep going, we get into this. Yorma Kalkinen with Tom Hobson. Qua. I'm pretty well-rounded, if I may say so myself, regarding um, what's in my collection. It's not just one thing. Here, the great guitarist Mike Keneally. He's um, done things with Zappa and other things. Hat. This is way cool. Mike Keneally. Morikante from Africa. Aquaba Beach. Um, this is a, a more commercial release of his. It, I think it was popular in Europe in the 80s. This is really, really good. Really happy. I like this album a lot. And here we have some discus music um, releases. Charlotte Keith. Right here, right now, quartet. Alive in the studio. I remember re um, reviewing this. This is good stuff. Another one from another uh, artist who sent this to me. Arbo Zylo. Z Leslie Kepper. This one took me a... a, a I didn't care for it right at, right away. But I listened to it a few times. No part of it. This is good. Veiled Matter on the No Part of It label. Mamani Keita and Mark Minnelli. Electro Bamako. So I would describe this as Afro Euro in sound.
the amazing Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan with Michael Brook, Night Song, the Kowali singer. Here he is, um, devotional and love songs. I do listen to these. This is inspirational. This stuff is, it transports you. Look at his face. Amazing stuff. Nusrat Fatah Ali Khan, Must Must. And um, thank goodness for, re for Peter Gabriel using his money to help proliferate that wonderful music. More. I know what I like. Nusrat Fatah Ali Khan, music from Bandit Queen. Amazing, amazing. Another. The day, the night, the dawn, the dusk. If you haven't heard this man's voice and what he does and how he can just raise, it's like he can literally, and that's how he sings, you know, because it's all spiritual. It's all for God. And that's the whole idea. I'm raising energy. We're going up, not down. Fantastic. Javan Kass, this is one that I, this is a weird one. It's a, it's a, but it's good. Visions of a Mogul Prince. And I don't, again, I've tried to find out about this record because I like it so much. It's a strange blend of East and West. It's cool. Someone sent this to me and I'm still less, not that impressed, but I have to get back to it. Hikagaku Moyo, Masana Temples. See, this is kind of like, these guys kind of strike me like third string players on a team. It's like you have the first wave of when this type of music came out. And then you have all these, um, the, the, the next generations, they adopt it and try to make it their own. Some people are good at it. This hasn't come through yet, okay? So I have to listen to it again. I just thought it was okay. But some people rave about this band, so I might be missing something. It's I don't say that. It's like it just hasn't touched me yet. We'll keep going. We're almost done with this pile. Killing Joke, the Pandemonium single. Jazz Coleman. Now he would be. That's a that's a that's a character who would be a challenge to talk to. But that's an example of another person who would be, a, I would be interested in meeting Jazz Coleman and talking to him. Just like I said, like Guy Chadwick of House of Love. Now I'll go ahead and put this out because I'm waiting for him to get back from vacation, but um, I'm friends with Dave Haw of Catherine Wheel. I'm gonna see if he would be interested in sharing his story of being in the band Catherine Wheel, but I'm waiting for him and his wife to get back home. Kiln. Here's something I found. Still don't know anything about it. It's good. Kiln. Um, see, the, the graphics give an indication. If I keep, if I've kept it, that means that it is con it's congruent, okay? So this is good. And the last bunch on this shelf that, well, no, it's not, because there's, this is the first part of my King Crimson, which goes on to the next sec shelf. But King Crimson. King Crimson. Yeah. I know what I like. Islands. This is the only one of the original albums that I still need to get a decent copy of on. No, no, I have Islands. It's the other one. The live album. Lark's Tongues in Aspic. This is, a, this is a groundbreaking album. Starless and Bible Black. Killer. Beat. Used to cover Heartbeat off of this. Um... The, de the deconstruction of light. And, there, and then it continues, but I'll stop here. 
Okay, folks, talk to me. Let's have a good week.